I need for you to meet this woman. I don't know how else to say this, but I am so excited to finally do this show. I, you know, I got to know my next guest, you know, basically via social media and some pro police things. And then we started talking and she's not just somebody who, who, you know, waves a flag and says, Oh, that's back the blue and things like that. She comes up with, things to do, tasks, solutions, and then she writes about it. And she now has an excellent following and uh, she's a real mover and shaker in the in the uh, support law enforcement world. And so I think you need to meet her. Paula Fitzsimmons, welcome to the show. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you so much for that introduction. And it's an honor to be here. Thank so you. Uh, you write a uh, a substack for the blue. So right. uh, we're going to talk more about that. But but you are not associated with law enforcement, affiliated with law enforcement in any way. Um, it's just that, you know, you live in a in a, a a fairly, let's just say a far left kind of place in the Midwest um, near where I grew up. And uh, and you got to know your police officers uh, through Neighborhood Watch, a program right. near and dear to me. I used to run it for my community. And uh, and then and then something happened in 2015 um, that made you really start taking a much closer look at um, the attacks on American law enforcement. Talk mm -hmm. about that. We were noticing right after this police officer involved incident that was completely um, deemed justified by the district attorney, um, police critics would say and do things um, towards the police that didn't match what we knew about them. We knew them to be professional men and women, very dedicated, very caring. Um, we knew them through public meetings. We met them through our local neighborhood watch and they were always very, very smart, very caring, very dedicated, nothing at all like the critics had described. So I knew, I knew at that point I had to say something and do something. And, you know, they were attacking our beloved Chief Koval. And he, if you've ever met him, he's just an amazing person. And they, they didn't deserve any of it. So I knew I had to stand up and speak up. So I formed a group called, um, we support the Madison Police Department, and we got a lot done during that time. Uh, we actually um, shepherded through a state law to benefit the Wisconsin Law Enforcement Memorial. Um, we lobbied successfully for more police officers, which, given our um, city's political environment, <laughs> wasn't the easiest thing to do. Nobody thought we could do it, but we only had two um, council members that voted against it. So we were really pleased with that. Um, we held four annual parties to show appreciation for the police. Um, and it was like a community open house. So it was kind of like an appreciation slash um, meet and greet the officers. And we had local businesses um, you know, donate. So we had buffet tables, we had brats, grilled brats, we had pizzas, mustacholi, salads, cakes. Um, we had the police horses there. We had um, the dogs. It was really a good time. Um, and I really missed those parties. Um, we held a vigil when somebody um, vandalized the law, law enforcement memorial um, downtown. Um, instead of getting angry, we decided to hold a special vigil to honor to honor the officers. And we had the uh, the state's uh, attorney, um, Brad Schimmel, former state's attorney, Brad Schimmel. We had um, a senator. We had a person from the Wisconsin Law Enforcement Memorial. And we paid a tribute. And it, it brought the community together. And it showed the police officers that we still have their back. So we turned a, a negative experience into something positive. Um, we also did a lot of educational programs, including um, we did a book project with Heather McDonald's um, book, The War on Cops. So we bought all these books for her and she autographed, she kindly autographed it for us. And we handed it out to the um, city council, each member of the city council and the mayor. And then several of us went to a meeting and we read for the book and we share things from the book. So, and I, and I think it may have opened up some minds. Um, we also had a yard sign project. 
um, we had these yellow signs made up and people would put them up through the, the city. And I'm not sure, depending on where you live, I'm not sure I would recommend this because ours were vandalized constantly. I mean, we, we would put one up, someone would write something really nasty on there. So we would keep putting them up. And somebody actually went around town and stole them. And um, the police found a bunch of them in their car. Um, we did a lot of media interviews and we had an information website where we educated people. And I think most importantly, we pushed back against, we used every, we found opportunities to push back against negative narratives, whether by um, writing op-eds or talking to the media or going to council meetings or, you know, writing articles on the website and so forth. And um, I think it really did make a difference. I, I'm told I gotta it, tell I'm you. Told it. <laughs> I got to tell you, Paula, everything you just described there, everything you just did is basically what the National Police Association is all about. You, as citizens, advocated for your law enforcement officers. And I think that's what is so extraordinary. And, and that's why I wanted to talk to you, because, you know, I also came from a community, a community in the Midwest, where we had strong citizen support of our police department, our citizens group. We had a group called Citizens Appreciate Police. They had an award ceremony uh, every year for us. We had wow. we had a community radio watch where they would, you know, you know, patrol and calling crimes. And I, I you know, we had so, police explorers. We had so many different programs. And I can't tell you as a, a, a police officer how good that makes you feel to have your citizens advocating for you in the community instead of just you know i mean it's great to go up to a police officer and say we appreciate you we support you and things like that but but you guys you put in the time and the miles and the money and and uh and it was really successful let's just tell people you are you're in madison wisconsin that's where this took place uh, uh you know beautiful beautiful city i've spent a, a lot of time city. there and uh, it, but the the university there is oftentimes called the Berkeley of the Midwest, yeah. and uh, it can be very far left in its politics. And and you guys took that on and uh, and you did so much good. Yeah, and I, mean, I, I will say it was it was very challenging. It wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't a cakewalk. I mean, we took a lot of harassment. Um, there was a point I had to shut my website down. Um somebody was sending me emails like I would get literally I'm not kidding like 300 400 a day it was like disgusting things so things like that and they would woo us in meetings and but they're the tolerant so, left pardon they oh, call I themselves know. the tolerant left they're the tolerant <laughs> inclusivity inclusivity exactly except as long as you think just like them uh, <laughs> um so, and, and I want people to know this is again, you know, like when you said you had to shut off your website, you're a professional author, right? You're a professional writer. Right. I write, um, but I don't write about, um, law enforcement. I actually write about, um, science and pets and about veterinarians. I write for veterinary, um, veterinarian publications. I write for pet publications and that sort of thing. So it's completely different, but I do love to write. So I wanted to use my skills and to benefit the police so right so fast forward to 2020 oh. and oh. um you know the the death of george floyd and you you know what did you see in oh. wisconsin it was awful um pretty much what you saw around the country betsy um there were riots there were people throwing uh, those molotov cocktails at cops they were throwing it like in cars with cops in it. Uh, we saw images of cop cars um, completely on fire. Um, basically what you saw in the media we had down there, we had, there were reports of um, people trying to run down the police and the district attorney actually did not prosecute a lot of them. A lot of them got a free pass. So for assaulting an officer, you get a free pass um, and that's an area of frustration, I think, for um, law enforcement, as well as the public who care about law enforcement. So but, um, 
after you saw all that, you started to do some significant writing, didn't right. you? Right. I had I had taken a short hiatus from the local group. Um, I figured I had done all I can do for that group. And Chief Koval had left and it, it just didn't have the, a lot of the cops we knew had left at that point. It just didn't have the same vibe. Um, it's still an excellent police department, don't get me wrong, but it didn't have that. We didn't feel like that same connection. Mm-hmm. So I kind of took a break. And then after watching what happened in 2020 and seeing that the war on cops had accelerated after George Floyd, I wanted to get back into it. But this time I wanted to do it on a nationwide level and take what I knew, my experiences from Madison, and then apply that nationwide. So um Right now, um, we're focused on a few things. Like one of them, one of the biggest priorities right now is networking with other organizations. And for instance, um, and as you may know, I'm partnering with the internet, partnering with the international, um, and I'm sorry, independent women's network. And we're trying to make this issue, um, make women, and we have a network of 30,000 more aware of this issue it, because we're the ones actually that are more at risk from sexual assaults and you know human trafficking and domestics and that sort of thing. And I, I, I just found it interesting, if not aggravating, that most of the women's organizations don't even touch this issue. So I found, and you know, you, 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 you know, you purport to support women. Yeah, this is an area that's affecting us. So um, that was an area of frustration that nobody was tackling it. So IWN is focused on that. So I'm partner, partnering with them. And in turn, they're partnering with other organizations. So it's kind of like a snowball effect. We're kind of gathering a network. Um, so one of the things we're doing is creating presentations, a series of presentations, three um, is part of a mini series. And the first one is called How the War on Cops Hurts Us and What We Can Do to um, Take Back Public Safety. And that was our first. Um, we're going to be working on another segment on how the war on cops harms marginalized communities. And number three, we're going to be doing another segment on how crime statistics can be misleading and manipulated. So and- that is a big. These are all amazing topics, and I'm so glad that you're partnering with women's organizations because, again, as we talk about this, and and you and I have talked about this, um, as we see the skyrocketing crime around the country, it's it's not just you know homicides in bad neighborhoods and big cities right. and things like that. It's one of the, everywhere. One of the things that we are seeing are the sexual assaults. The human trafficking, the uh, we see women owned businesses that um, there are shoplifters and burglars and armed robbers. And and we are seeing a huge impact um, in the lives of women in this country. And unfortunately, this issue has become politicized. So a, a lot of women kind of believe they have to vote left because, right. you know, whether it's because of you know, women's rights or that euphemism, reproductive health or or yeah. whatever, when they don't realize, I think a lot of the times women don't realize, especially young women, that if you support law enforcement, you're actually advocating for your own health and safety. Exactly, Betsy, exactly. And we have so much to lose um, right now. It, it, you know, it's really scary. I mean, there's, you know, and I just wrote an ebook. Um, you know, and then it covers a lot of the materials and I covered it in my presentation, how we're affected. I mean, there's, you know, there are cities like Los Angeles that are disbanding special units, like uh, special victims units, animal um, cruelty units, um, homeless units, things like that. Um, New York is not solving rapes like it used to. Seattle Seattle is only taking on, Seattle is only Mm -hmm. um, taking on sexual assault cases that impact um younger like girls Mm -hmm. or where they have information if it's an older woman they have to have information or it has to be a current case so i mean these are things that really do impact us and a lot of these women's organizations just don't even want to touch it because like you said it's politicized 
and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Um, what are some of the topics? Because I want people, I want everybody to go to your Substack, and uh, and I want you, uh, I want them to subscribe to your Substack. Talk about some of the topics that you've written on recently, because you just you touch everything, and I, <laughs> I want people to know. Um, well, let's see. I talk about weak leadership and how that's impacting policing. I talk about um, how crime statistics can be misleading. I talk about um, how the overzealous indictment, the wrongful overzealous indictment of cops is hurting us. Um, I brought up, you know, that case with Agent Wagner here in Madison, and I talked to um, the FOP um, president here in Wisconsin. Um, and I try to give resources and give people hope. I want to give police officers hope and for them to know that there are people who actually care. Um, I'm trying to think what else, I, I, um, how women are harmed, how women are harmed. Um, and then I sometimes I go a little off topic about um, how men are not the enemy and that sort of thing, how they've become kind of like a, like we're oppressed, you know what I mean? They like, some groups like to say we're oppressed. I don't feel oppressed. So I- Right, I mean, sometimes I, <laughs> I, I've heard activists talk about law enforcement as the patriarchy. And I, uh, and I think, I look in the mirror and I'm like, really, do you really think that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, but but that's the thing because, and again, th there's nobody more sexist than a uh, feminist activist you know i mean i i became a police officer in uh, 1980 you know i'm i'm pretty long in the tooth if you will and i watched my mother a school teacher who was a classical feminist and she was one of those first feminists who worked outside the home got two master's degrees uh and wow. raised two kids you know true feminism and that's what and, i think though right yeah right and that's women's rights feminism. yes <laughs> But you know now you see uh, you do see people who call themselves feminists, but yet they say you know oh law enforcement's a bunch of toxic masculinity. I'm like, well, I did that for 29 years. I'm not particularly toxically masculine, and uh, you know, but it is, and we we have to laugh at it and we have to make fun of it because otherwise we'd all be crying all the time because it it, it is. I know it's frustrating for me as a police officer and the spokesman for the National Police Association. And I know it's frustrating for you as a citizen, as an American, um, and as an author and a researcher, isn't it? It's very frustrating. And I honestly, I'm very frightened. Um, I do what I can and I'm trying, I, I'm working really hard to support the police and bring together people. I, I don't... <laughs> Honestly, Betsy, I don't even know if this will put a dent in it. Um, it's better than doing nothing. Um, we have to do something. I mean, it's, it's, you know, sitting back and complaining and hashtagging on social media. That's not, you know, that's not getting us anywhere. We have to start talking to our legislators. We have to start urging them to um, craft bills that support police officers. We have to start doing more things that actually count. If somebody's watching Paula and they want to um they want to start something for their local police department what how do you recommend um starting that process like you did 10 12 years ago it, Betsy honestly it just takes one person um I had like a few helpers along the way, but I basically did most of it. And it just takes one person. Just start off slowly. You don't have to do everything. Um, don't overwhelm yourself. Just start by talking to police officers. Go on ride-alongs. Go to the Citizen Academy. Get to know the issues. Start speaking up, um, writing op-eds. Go to city council meetings. Push back against policies that will harm police. Like... Um, they want to do bans on, on um, tear gas, things like that. They want the cops to start to stand down, start talking back, push back, tell the public, tell, you know, whoever will listen that these policies are harmful to police officers and they're harmful to us. Talk, tell people about um, how the war on police has harmed recruiting. 
and how, as a result, um, these special units are closing down and things like that. Um, I do have a booklet and I did send you a copy. It's an yep. ebook. And in the back, I put um, a list of different things people can do um, to start supporting their police department, both locally, statewide level, and at the federal level. And I'm going to actually put it out tonight. I haven't really made it public yet, but um, I encourage people to. It's a free, it's completely free. And uh, I do everything on a volunteer basis. I don't accept any money. Um, my website is not revenue based or anything like that. It's strictly a labor of love. And I do this as a concerned American um, because I see, you know, the nation is in decline. And one thing we really need in an era where we have increased um, civil, you know, riots and civil disobedience, we have, you know, the borders out of control. We have rising crime. We have threats from, you know, other countries. We need the basics. We need the police. We need the military. So, Paula, where can people uh, find you on social media? Where can they find your Substack? Where can they get the book? Okay, Substack is for the blue dot Substack dot com, and I just finished the book yesterday. It should be available by this weekend. If you go to the website, um, you can find it. More information about it. I'll also be um, mentioning it on my Twitter account, which is for the blue one. Right. And that's for the at for the blue number one. Right. Awesome. Paula, I know you're so busy. I cannot thank you enough for taking time out to talk with us today. And if you would like more information about the National Police Association, visit us at nationalpolice.org. Ma'am, put the gun down. Put the gun down. Last year. Law enforcement officers were involved in hundreds of thousands of use of force incidents. A use of force incident is when an officer must use nonverbal tactics to gain control of a dangerous situation. Put the knife on the ground. In many cases, officers have no choice but to use force when a suspect doesn't comply with a lawful order. Use of force is always ugly. No one likes it, especially police officers. Together, we can help de-escalate these dangerous encounters. Help police officers by complying with their lawful orders. Don't attack, attempt to disarm, or flee from an officer. Use of force is an officer's last option. Most incidents can be avoided by not resisting arrest. If you feel you've been wrongfully detained by a police officer, then seek a legal solution after the encounter has been resolved. Let's keep everyone safe. Comply now and complain later.